Laura's Law, named after Laura Wilcox, who was killed by a mentally ill man in 2001, has been a state law for a decade, but it's optional for each county to adopt the law. Here with the next steps for implementing Laura's Law in San Diego County are my guest, Supervisor Dave Roberts and Teresa Bish, former chair of the Mental Health Advisory Board. And Supervisor Roberts, this law has been on the books, as I said, for 10 years. Why try to implement it now? Well, when state laws are passed, if they have a financial um, component to it, they are um, optional. And so when I came on the board back in 2013, one of my priorities was to look at what mental health services we could offer and try to make improvements. I partnered with Supervisor Diane Jacob. One of the many tools that people asked us to consider was Laura's Law. We've looked at it for two years. The Mental Health Board recommended we implement Laura's Law. Today, we approved a plan to begin looking at the implementation of Laura's Law. Who would fund it? Where would the money come from? So there are state funds that are available for this. Um, Senator Daryl Steinberg changed funding formula so that counties can get state funding for this. So I believe it's just another tool that we can use here in the county. And Teresa, there's already a legal option called a 5150 that allows uh, people who are uh, either a threat to themselves mm -hmm. or a threat to others to be uh, involuntarily put in a hospital for 72 hours. How is Laura's Law different? Laura's law is very different. First of all, it's civil law, so the person doesn't have to do something criminal or be subject to an involuntary hold necessarily to be offered assisted outpatient treatment. So in other words, this is a preemptive legal structure that allows an individual not to have to degrade to the point of crisis before a 5150 is, is able to legally be called. And, and you, you said there's about nine different conditions. What are some of the top conditions? Well, they have to be over the age of 18 and primarily known to this county, meaning they've had a hospitalization and or an incarceration. So they, they're just not compliant then with the treatment plan. And, and until this year, mm -hmm. only one county in California has used Laura's Law for any length of time. I know LA had a, a partial uh, implementation right. of it. So what have we learned from Nevada County who used it and, and also LA? Well, we've learned that there's a enormous uh, fiscal savings because no longer does that person warrant a hospital stay, which is much more expensive than the existing outpatient treatment programs that they'd be allowed to access. Furthermore, uh, they uh, inhibit incarceration, um, meaning they don't have to degrade to the point where they're a threat to themselves or others, they're not doing anything illegal. So there's a enormous savings uh, due to uh, a, an inhibition to uh, need uh, incarceration. Right, and it's so a different way of, a different place of treating them actually. It, actually it is, a different place of treating them as an outpatient. And then uh, we know that people are uh, realizing recovery, they're getting jobs, they have a quality of life has improved enormously. So you've seen a, a lot of different benefits mm -hmm. from this, but uh, Supervisor Roberts, uh, disability advocates and the ACLU are opposed to Laura's Law. They said that it, it reinforces stereotypes, that, uh, that mentally ill people are violent, and it kind of takes us a step backwards to the bad old days of involuntary commitments or committals right. to hospitals. What is your response to those concerns? Well, I've met with the ACLU through my staff, I respect their opinion. I just disagree with them. Those bad horror stories are a thing of the past. We have so many different requirements now in place to make sure that people's rights are protected. And you mentioned the 72 hour hold. We've also implemented a 14 day hold and a 30 day hold, new tools that we've offered. And Assembly Member Marie Waldron, a Republican from Escondido, is actually submitting legislation to require all counties to carry out Laura's Law now without the funding. So there's a lot going on in this area. Uh, what is the next step, if you could tell me very briefly, after the health uh, county health develops the implementation plan? So we've asked for the plan to be brought back to us so that we can vote and make sure that it's what the board wants. We want our behavioral health advisory board to have a role in this and make sure that we're really heading in the right direction. So this was a big step forward today, but there's a lot of work still ahead to get this tool in place. All right, County Supervisor Dave Roberts and Teresa Bish, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.